All right, it's only me. I thought I'd come on the night and do a wee bit more talking about music, seeing as I've not done anything uh, online this week. So uh, I thought I'd come on the night. Uh, I wasn't really sure what I was going to talk about. So I've decided um, on Thin Lizzy the night because I was on talking to Norman Bell earlier on down, down in London and we was talking about about the Chinatown album and how it wasn't very good but then Norman pointed out that rightly so that Thin, Thin Lizzy have got a kind of patchy back catalogue so I thought hey that's that's a good that's a good place to start so I decided to, to talk about Thin Lizzy I will go back 35 years again when I started liking Thin Lizzy uh, I was Ken right into Thin Lizzy years and years ago. It's kind of worn off now. Um, I can still like them a lot, but I'm no just as mental about Thin Lizzy as it used to be when I, when I was a boy. But uh, I'm going to cover the the period tonight. Is Brian Brian Fabian, Brian Robertson, and Scott Gorham joined the band. Um, not really that much to say about the three Eric Bell albums. Can uh, because they, they became a, a kind of bigger legend later on, they can albums gained quite a lot of significance just through the stuff that came after them, but kind of quite unremarkable kind of rock albums, um, early rock albums, again, some, some kinds, no even hard rock, just rock. So I'm going to pick it up for 1974, for the, the start of the two guitar thin, Lizzie. Um, so... I even went down and, and dug my albums out for this one, kind of, which I've I haven't done the past couple of times. But here we go. This is the first album we made with Scott Gorham and Phil Lynott. The band is a Nightlife for nineteen seventy four. Uh, quite a nice bit of album artwork there by the the guy that, that did all the Thin Lizzy album art uh, when they were doing. Uh, album covers, uh, Irish guy called Jim Fitzpatrick, who I believe was was a kind of a mate of Phil Lynott's. Uh, Phil, uh, the bond at this time can consists of Phil Lynott bass and singing, um, Brian Downey on the drums, and Scott Gorham and Brian Robertson on guitars. Uh, on the back there, I mean, a lot of Brian Robertson. I don't even know what age he was like. Probably about what, eighteen there. And can, can uh, you've got to remember at this time that the thing that Thin Lizzy had been remembered for at this time or are, are famous for was they had an, a kind of novelty hit single called Whiskey in the Jar. And they were kind of, seen as a kind of one hit wonder bone and they were looking for a kind of follow up. So this is a kind of confused album, Nightlife. Uh, a lot of the songs, again, there's not really any on this album that would go and to, oh, hang on, it's still in love with you, there. Although Frankie Miller does some of the, the singing on it, and Gary Moore actually does the, the big guitar solo that Brian Robertson would make famous on the, the live version. But this is, this, again, really, really light rock music here, Ken, with the songs like She Knows and uh, Nightlife's, the, the old kind of country, country standard. Yeah. Uh, Jesus, I mean, wow. Ken, I've I've not looked at this album for for that long. It, it's only money, Ken. The, the, not really big rough stuff here, Ken. Even the you would talk about Sha La La, which would turn into a kind of good live workout. But Ken, it's it's not a, it's not an amazing song, Ken. Phil one a great lyricist and and great songwriter, but he hasn't quite blossomed yet here, and they don't really know what they're doing, Ken. The, the guitars aren't they that overdriven. And they still haven't got that guitar harmony thing, which which they get credited for can inventing. Although I, I really don't think Thin Lizzy invented it. He's popular popularized it, but they never invented it. Uh, next album up is 1975's Fighting Album, when you've got them standing on the front here with tight trousers with flares, trying to look like a like a gang. 
or something, can you? Brian Downey, well, I thought it was a knife. It's a, no, it's Brian Robertson, it's a goat with a knife. And uh, again, Brian Downey there with a, a pipe. Again, not as if I go beat somebody up. So I guess it's maybe a kind of, a mere kind of cliched rock kind of look, but can still a bit goofy. No, no. Can you, I understand why they, they went with the, the mere kind of painting kind of style. Can you don't want an album cover like this, it's ridiculous. But can they're starting to get on the ball here. A uh, nice wee thing about this album is as well, that they tell you who plays the guitar solos, that the songs have got a wee heart next to them for uh, Scott Gorham and a, a diamond for uh, Brian Robertson. They're on the back as well, they're still crying. Can this camera shooting up at them, can try to make them look hard with big belt buckles and that, can leather jackets, pre predating. Uh, Judas Priest here with the, the leather jacket, although nobody any studs are in them. But there you go, Ken. You've got Rosalie there. Okay, it's a cover version. But Ken, a good wee way to start there. Uh, for those who love to live, is it Ken? That's when you're starting to get into harmony guitars and that. Suicide, great song. Wild one. Uh, another good one with the harmony guitars. Fighting my way back. Second sides, maybe a bit patchier. Uh, Ken, King's Vengeance and. Spirit slips away, silver dollar, and freedom song. Nobody remembers these. Ba Ballad of Hard Man. Again, but a couple of these songs written by. Again, they still can't work out who's writing the songs here, because you've got silver dollar there written completely by Brian Robertson. Ballad of Hard Man written by Scott Gorham. So they're kind of getting there now. Uh, what's doing the front of Phil's true? I don't know. It could be anything really, can it? Uh, Ken, that, that's what you Ken, if you were getting a photo of yourself Ken, like that, Ken, for the, the doing up, Ken, you'd probably stick a, a banana or a cucumber or, Ken, whatever, a pair of soaks down there. But now we're getting to the the real deal stuff here. It's a Jailbreak album for 1976, Ken. This is, this is prime Thin Lizzy. In fact, I'd even go as far as to say is that this is... This is a high water mark here with the, the Jailbreak album. A nice bit of cover art again there by the Jim Fitzpatrick. But it is, it's like, it opens up. Ken, and this is me I like it now. It's nae forties uh Nae forties and I'm trying to look hard. Ken, the, they've jumped on the kind of cartoon character thing here. Ken, on the, that nice wee kind of flip out album cover with them getting chased by the overlord. Ken, on the Jailbreak happening on the telly there. And uh, Ken's brilliant material here, and Ken, this is definitely Thin Lizzy's best album, front to back. Uh, Ken Jailbreak, Angel for the Coast, Running Back's maybe a wee bit kind of poppy, a kind of keyboard thing happening there. Uh, a, lot, a lot of good songs that nobody ever talks about when you can. Uh, Warriors, there you go, uh, Boys Are Back in Town, uh, Cowboy Song and Emerald at the end there, Ken, these. These are the songs that would build Thin Lizzy into a, a, a cracking live attraction here, Ken. They would pick Cowboy Song where the boys are back in town street in at the end of it. Ken, by this time they've got the harmony guitars things happening. And Ken, this this was them starting to get their, their finger out their arse. Phil Lennett really getting some good stuff here. And I think pretty sure a lot of this album was written while he was in the hospital recuperating for... Hepatitis, if I remember right, when they were on a, they were on American tour by, we Queen, or was that was that later on? But yeah, one of the American tours they did to get sent him, <coughs> we fell in it with the hepatitis, and then they would go and after that, the day Johnny the Fox, another, now cracking album cover. Can I don't know if it's necessarily. A heavy metal, can hard rock album cover, but can definitely a nice wee, kind of kind of Celtic Irish feel to it with the the folks sitting in the middle there. Uh, uh, quite a confusing track list here, because you've you've got can it's called Johnny the Fox, but you've got a song called Johnny, and a song called Johnny the Fox meets Jimmy the Weed, which aren't they related at all? This is a back, it's quite hard to make out there, but can it. Uh, a lot of these songs would never ever go and be played live that much. Eh? Massacre and Don't Believe a Word are probably the, the two most famous ones. 
but again, I, I quite enjoy this album with Johnny and Rocky at the start, two really, really good songs. And some old songs in there as well, like kind of Old Flame, Sweet Marie, Fool's Gold, uh, last song, Boogie Boogie Dance. There's a, a kind of weird number, Ken. No really top drawer stuff. But apparently Phil Collins at uh, Genesis and In There Tonight uh, plays percussion on this album somewhere. It doesn't say where, it just says he plays percussion. Uh, that's, that's Phil Collins, he'll come and play on anything. So... They go on tour with us, and for some reason, Brian Robertson ends up in a fight with somebody in a, a nightclub. I think it was Frankie Miller. Somebody was going to glass Frankie Miller's face, and Brian Robertson stuck his horn up, and the, the glass went right through Brian Robertson's horn. So that was him out of action. So the next album they had today. They went to Canada to record the Bad Reputation album, produced by uh, Johnny the Fox and Jailbreak, was produced by John Alcott. This time they've went for Tony Visconti, uh, David Bowie, and kind of pop producer. Uh, three guys on the cover there because Brian Robertson has been fired in the meantime here. For, he didn't he didn't go home good with, with Phil Lennon. Ken, he wanted to be the star of the Bond. So that's a bit of a bad reputation album. This is another Ken. Probably after Jailbreak, this is the best one, Ken. This is the the confusing thing on the back here is that uh, Brian Robertson's on the back cover photo. Uh, but no on the front. Again, they've got the wee Love Hearts thing and the, the diamonds here, but uh, can you see the thing there? It's all Love Hearts because they let Scott Gorham play pretty much all the guitars on it. For some reason, can if if you had one of the two guys, it would never be Scott Gorham for me. It would always be the other guy. Can nothing against Scott Gorham, but can he was I was there, but the other guy was I was the kind of star man, if you know what I mean. And can I don't think that's a coincidence. That the songs on this are brilliant. Can Soldier of Fortune, Bad Reputation, Opium Trail, Southbound. Again, maybe the. The second side maybe a wee tiny bit weaker, but a lot of these songs are really good. Uh, Killer Without a Cause, Dear Dear Lord. Uh, really, really great songs. I forgot how can that's the thing when I when I get these out, I don't look at them before I do these. I, just, I like to get them out and look at them and so I get, I can react to them because I've no seen them. Uh, Brian Robertson does do a couple of things here. Um plays a cracking guitar solo on Opium Trail. Opium Trail, one of the, the great Finn Lizzy songs that nobody ever talks about. Can uh, never see any tribute bonds or anything doing it. Can really, really cracking hard rock song. But again, can it's, it's no heavy metal. It's it's hard rock with a small H and a small R, really. So, Brian Robertson comes back because they need to go out and tour. And... Um, uh, he had been replaced by Gary Moore for an American tour as a stand-in. But then he come back and they do this Thin Lizzy live and dangerous. Can I, I can still remember buying this. I bought it out of Derek McAdams Orion Records in Irvine. And I remember the day I bought it, I, I was out with my big sister and we were over in Irvine because my gran was in Irvine Central at the time, she was no wheel and we went a walk into the town and I remember buying this kind of, I had no idea what this was but I can remember sitting on the bus on the way home looking at all the pictures on the inside cover and just thinking, hey this looks the bottom, what is this? Uh, Ken, when my dad have been? Late 80s, my dad. A while ago. But it's it's hard. It's hard to talk about Thin Lizzy's Live and Danger, Ken. When, when folk talk about the the greatest live albums of all time, Thin Lizzy's Live and Dangerous 
is usually ranked number one. Ken is never usually in question. Ken is always ranked number one, and and nobody ever questions it. Ken, nobody ever says, "Oh no, I can't have that." Ken, it's universally accepted that Thin Lizzy is alive and dangerous. If it isn't he, the greatest live album of all time, then it's one of them, and I, I can't really disagree. The only thing is, I've heard it that many times, it's kind of played out, Ken. It's, I don't even need to listen to this anymore. I've heard it so many times. I can play every single one of these songs on the guitar. Ken, that, that's what I used to do, in the, sit in the back room, young boys in the back room with the guitars, and if you're learning to play the guitar, there's nothing better to learn to play than... Than all these songs on here, Ken. It's it's everything great, but Thin Lizzy, it really is. Ken, if you only ever ever get one Thin Lizzy album, then it has to be this one. It, it would have made number one, but it came out at the same time as the soundtrack for Grease, so it, it went to number two in the charts. But Ken, when we're talking about big big albums, and you're talking about Ken, probably this one album is, is where Thin Lizzy's legend is built. Ken, and look at that album cover, Ken, you need to pull back see is it the whole thing. Ken, it's just, Ken, just imagine standing in the front row there, looking at that, Ken, bathed in light, down the knees, playing a guitar. Ken, that just looks like the best thing to be doing in the world ever, Ken. So I'm not going to sit here and talk about how good Live and Dangerous is that much longer. I'm just having another look at it because I've not actually clapped eyes on this actual album. In fact, what I used to do was, I used to I was right inside how much these cost. Uh, how much did that, how much did that skin me? It was four ninety nine, four ninety nine in the late 80s. Anyway, moving on. So, after Live and Dangerous tour was completed, Brian Robertson just continued to be a, a dick, depending on who you believe. Even, I think even Brian Robertson can come out and say that he was a dick. And they got Gary Moore back as a full-time replacement for him after him stunning in twice, actually. He stood in when they got a Derek Bell before Brian Robertson and Scott Gordon come in and then he come in for Brian Robertson for the American tour with Queen, I think it was. So he already knew it was DNC so come in, he Ken knew all the songs. And they make this album here, which is Black Rose for 1979. He was recording in Paris. I think, eh... Uh, ah, there you go, pa Pathé Marconi Studios, Paris, France. And good, good night at Air Studios where they would record the uh, next couple albums. I'm pretty sure. Uh, Ken, that cover painting there by Jim Fitzpatrick on the Ken. So, some folk have come out no bad. Ken Scott Gorham there, lots of. Like, he's Ken actually lots like a woman. Ken Phil Lennox probably done all right. Ken Gary Moore. Ken, what? Who wants a picture of herself like that? Ken and Brian Downey. That actually is Brian down and he's painted there. But Ken, this is a, a the the usual Thin Lizzy album where you've got some absolutely amazing songs and some some kind of crap. Okay, no no crap, but just filler songs. Uh, do anything you want to is a pop poppy song, Ken, a weird song to start an album. Uh, Toughest Street in St. Town's a good song. S and M. Never been a big fan of that one. Waiting for an alibi, one of the best of Finn Lizzie's at Ken Sarah. Don't really Ken, it's, that's no hard rock. Got to give it up's a good song. Uh, but then you've got Get Out of Here and With Love, which are just kind of ordinary, and then the monster at the end there was Black Rose, which is, again, if you've never heard it, is like a kind of pie and tea, or the old classic Irish songs. Ken, the traditional Irish songs. So, Ken, stellar guitar work by, by Gary Moore. Just glad they didn't ask him to sing because his singing voice is horrible. But Ken, that's like three massive big hit singles. In the UK, Finley's, Lizzie's, Ken, 
probably is at the their peak commercially here. I was in the charts, even doing a a side bond with a couple of the guys with the Sex Pistols called the Greedies. But again, if you if you believe the the stories, this this is when they started taking the hard hard drugs, heroin and stuff. So they were starting to you know, muck up is the best way to put it. And at this time as well, Finn, Phil Lynott was writing a solo album, which was I was getting the guys for Finn Lizzie to play on. So he was doing hundreds of different things at the one time. And we ended up here with this Finn Lizzie album called Chinatown, which was the one me and Norman Bell were talking about earlier on. Um, cracking, cracking album cover. I can remember buying this just on the strength of the album cover. Again, also in Orion Records and in, in Irvine. Again, the the artwork is amazing. The the album pretty rubbish. Uh, Chinatown, Killer on the Loose. Uh, Sh Sugar Blues, a good wee workout there. Yeah. But that second side there is absolutely crap. There's nothing on that second side. I'll have a lot here again. That, that's a Gary Moore had left by this time in the middle of an American tour. It fell out with Phil Lynott. Ken, when you're talking about Thin Lizzy, you're talking about hard drinking guys, hard drugging guys. And Ken, that, that side was going to make for a, a volatile a working environment, Ken. So Gary Moore Lee's they go in Major or people, Major uh, Ultravox and he he finished out the tour and then they go in Snowy White who was playing with Pink Floyd uh doing the wall shows. They go and, and Cliff Richard again, if you're gonna replace a, a, a hard rock guitar player again, Gary Moore Arguably one of the greatest of all time. If you're going to replace him, then you're going to get a guy that plays a guitar with Cliff Richard then, aren't you? Again, no offence to Snowy White. I think Snowy White's an amazing, amazing guitar player. He's no a hard rock player to be any, any stretch of the imagination. But Chinatown, pff, crap. It, it, it might have been better if Phil Lennon brought an album out the run about the same time called Solo and Soho, which had a song called Dear Miss Lonely Hearts on it, which had the Finn, Finn Lizzy lineup on it. And I think that's a great song. If that had been on that album, it would have made it a wee bit better. But again, Chinatown, the, the, the two songs, Chinatown and Kill and Lose, big hit singles, the rest of it, for the bin, for the bin. Crap, crap. Again, you got all these photo tell you, oh, Finn Lizzy, yeah, everything they did was, ever, was great, wasn't it? And you're like, nope. Uh, after that, this greatest hits album called The Adventures of Thin Lizzy, which kind of back to the jailbreak style cartoon, again, Thin Lizzy there, getting chased out. This is actually a nice wee compilation album. Gives you a wee story on the back there about everything they've been doing up to there, again, all the album covers and that. Uh, can you kind of go around with that track list and even go at Whiskey in a Jar in there. Don't know what Wild One's doing on it. I don't know if that was that big a hit single, but again, everyone else. Back in the day when you would have got 40 minutes. Again, if you... You could even give that to your gran. Again, there's nothing on there that's really that... Again, there's no heavy metal. It really isn't. It? Yeah, there's Snowy White there. Yeah, great. Again, that, that's a nice wee compilation album there. Next up, Renegade. By this time, they got a keyboard player in as well, a guy called Dan Horton, who would go into form a band called Deer after this, which was kind of wishy-washy American rock, which can not really that Thin Lizzy. I think their second album, Blood for Stones, kind of Thin Lizzy. A wee tiny bit Thin Lizzy, but the rest of it's kind of wishy-washy, wimpy American, kind of no my bag. But uh, on the back, he didn't even make the album cover. Again, they, they didn't even put him on the album cover. Darn Horton, pair bugger. But th this is a far better album than, than Chinatown. Again, you've got uh, stuff like Angel of Death on there. 
the, the track Renegade, the pressure will blow and leave this town, Ken, that, that's a really no bad first side there Ken, good songs Hollywood, other good song uh, the rest of that side two there Ken, it's nothing really crap and boring like the second side of Chinatown but Ken, some weird tracks here like Fats, written by Snowy White it's a kind of weird, kind of jazzy kind of number and the last song there, It's Getting Dangerous, that's an old bad track. But Ren Renegade gets kind of flushed in the pan along with Chinatown, which I don't think's fair. Because I think Renegade's quite a, a good, strong... A, a, a strong an album as they could probably make at the time, seeing as uh, they were all out there not on drinking drugs. Again, quite amazing. They, they, they go to any albums can you remember these bonds were churning out these albums once a year can no like new where the bond bring an album out every five year can god knows what they're doing but can in, in these days you had bonds on the road doing a, an album doing a tour can i don't know maybe the, the years were longer back then but by this time the they started kind of turning on snowy white a wee bit the the, the music press kind of try to blame him for the fact that Thin Lizzy was on their ass it kind of wasn't he it wasn't he Phil Lynott or the drugs or anything like that it was all Snowy White's fault so I think Snowy White was getting a bit sick here or uh, even even again Snowy White couldn't he have been a big drugger so I think he probably just get sick of the drugs and Ken having to deal with folk that were they're not Ken has Ken has been seen already folk are having a hard time putting up with other folk and their, their habits so they, they get in a young guy for Tigers of Pantan I think he was playing with at the time John Sykes going to play guitar in Whitesnake and they one of the biggest selling rock albums of all time right half the songs Whitesnake's 1987 or Whitesnake this album's actually called and then he would day blue murder and then for all intents and purposes disappear up his own arse Ken, which is quite strange but he would come on board just in time he finished the Thunder and Lightning album which I'm pretty sure was already half written while Snowy White was in a bond uh, moving away from Jim Fitzpatrick's paintings here we had kind of mere heavy metal cover of a, a bass guitar getting electric shock and a a studded fist glove coming up out of the ground, Ken. No really that much Thin Lizzy kind of thing, but th this is a different Thin Lizzy. John Sykes brought something different to the table here. Ken, at the time, at the time John Sykes' his guitar playing was actually quite different from MD Elsie's, Ken. It had a touch of the Gary Moore about him, a touch of the Richie Blackmore, but sp speed it up a lot faster and, and a lot more distortion. Only, only stuff, Ken. Lightning fast guitar runs, big bends, Ken. Great stuff, Ken. John Sykes, for, for all he never done that much, what he did do was, was really good. And, Ken, that, this is a really strong album, a good a good way for Thin Lizzy to go out, as it turned out. Uh, there's nothing on there that, that's, that's that bad, Ken. Bad Habits is maybe a bit. But. Ken, uh, I know Bobby doesn't like Baby Please Don't Go, but I thought that was an old bad song, Ken. Bit repetitive, but uh, Ken, never never minded it that much. Thunder and Lightning, Cold Sweat, which would be the backbone of uh, Upshot's gig, so I'm pretty sure Cold Sweat was played at every single Upshot gig we ever did. Ken, I'm more or less positive that was the case. Ken and I'm probably the only person that would know. But uh, other good stuff there, Ken, good harmony guitars on uh, The Holy War. And uh, The Sun Goes Down, quite a nice wee... Nice wee kind of... It's not, it's not like a slow song, but it's it kind of got a weird kind of groove to it. The Sun Goes Down. So then they had to do own what turned out to be announced as the farewell tour. And went out and played just about everywhere. And made this another double live album called Life Live. Can on the surface of it, that this could have been. Can I like the the album cover? Jesus, I've not seen this for years. 
but again, this goes back to the, the old days of actually vinyl albums and you would open out the gatefold and can you even go a picture of Midjour there where I'm pretty sure that's Dave Flett when they come in for Gary Moore and that and the Kenny S Sydney Opera House there whereas Brian Downey had actually buggered off when they did that Sydney Opera House guy apparently he was fried or get sick of folk doing heroin and stuff and buggered off and they got Martin Ozif who'd played with the Ian Gillen band and Elf to play the drums and that's available on video if you're looking for that but that, that kind of but the, the thing about this album is it, for some reason it, it just doesn't stack up to Live and Dangerous which is kind of strange because when you look at the track listing Again, it's what you want. Thin Lizzy classics. Can there's nothing on there that you would kind of renegade in Hollywood there. And I think maybe Angel of Death as well, although it doesn't say it in the album cover. I think they're with the snowy white lineup because they go it. That's where that back cover picture is there. They go it every single Thin Lizzy guitar player, except for Snowy White. Who appears on day tracks here, but every uh, Thin Lizzy guitar player appears on this album because when they did the Hammersmith Odeon show, they got them all up today, uh, a tune each, and then the opera again. I take it this photo must have been took while they were playing the rocker because they all got them then played the rocker at the end. Uh, is it a King Eddie? Aye, that's a King Eddie. And uh, there's a there's the fourth side there. Brian Robertson comes on, does Emerald, Gary Moore does Black Rose, and uh, I'm pretty sure it's John Sykes does Still In Love With You, for for some weird reason. But I can, I don't know, I don't know what's up with this album, but for some reason it just didn't set the head on fire, it, as, as it should be. But that, that was aimed by then, that was the, the end of Thin Lizzy. At the end of this tour, they, they packed up and buggered off. Um, just just before they, they did bugger off, the, the BBC recorded them live at Redden. That, this is worth tracking down if you can find it. I think it's pretty rare now. But that, this is an, a nice alternative to, to Life Live. This is actually a real 100% live gig in the overdubs of the Thunder and Lightning lineup. Uh, the, I think it was the last UK appearance at the, the Redden Festival a wee unreleased song in there called The Night in the Life of the Blues Singer which is pretty good but the rest of it pretty much done Lizzie's greatest hits here along with the, the Thunder and Lightning stuff Ken Andrew, Ready, Jailbreak Emerald she, not, nothing wrong with any of that but Ken that, there's uh, plenty of life in, in that live one I'm glad I got that at the time. And then uh, there's a couple of compilation albums. I remember the dedication album being quite a big deal at the time because it uh, what was supposed to be a, a Phil Linnet composition that they fun and got Brian Downey to play the the drums and Scott Gordon to play the guitars over the top of Phil Linnet's demo to make a new Thin Lizzy song and then later on they found out it was actually Lawrence Archer that had wrote the song maybe with it for, I can't remember if Lawrence Archer wrote it with Phil Linnett or no but it wasn't his Phil Linnett composition anyway although it was touted to be it was for his band that he did after this Grand Slam and then they brought a, a compilation album called The Wild One which I never really bought because it, it wasn't that different for dedication but they did bring out this Double CD, Finn Lizzie's Greatest Hits, which is a kind of, I don't know, is it, is it thing? It's just like a two CD of Finn Lizzie, again, it's no sh showdown, isn't it? Why not Finn Lizzie's Greatest Hits? And plus they've shoehorned the songs with Gary Moore in there, Out in the Fields and Parisian Walkways, which have got nothing to do with uh, Finn Lizzie King's Call. By Phil Linnett, Yellow, Yellow Peril, which used to be the tune for Top of the Pops uh, back in the, the early 80s. Uh, that's enough of me talking about Thin Lizzy. 
uh, after this, Phil Lennon couldn't really deal with no having Phil uh, Finn Lizzie in his life anymore. It was it was like his his gang, and he, his drug problems just kept getting worse and worse. Try to start a new bond called Grand Slam with Brian Downey on the drums again, uh, Mark Stanley on the keyboards, Lauren Sarcher on guitar, and a guy called Deutsch Nagel on the rhythm guitar. It never took half, and they never got any interest in getting signed. Did a couple of things with Gary Moore, and then he died in say, January, what, 86? Uh, pretty, pretty much a shame, because he was just a young man with terrible drug problems. He left, left a couple of young, young daughters, again, terrible, tragic, tragic. But again, that's me looking back on Thin Lizzy. I mean, I really used to love him when I was younger. But again, that's all there is, and there isn't any more. They have had a couple of attempts at restarting the bond. Uh, John Sykes came back and got Scott Gorham, Tommy Aldridge, and Marco Mendoza and done a first beat. You can't do anything, Lizzie, without Phil Linnett. And then they try to do it again with Scott Gorham, Vivian Campbell, Brian Downey. Who's there, guys, now? Ricky Warwick. And uh, who was the best player for them? God, I can't even mind. There's been that many folk coming I'm not really interested in uh, Thin Lizzy without... You can't have Thin Lizzy without Phil, Phil Linnett. You just can't. You can have Phil Linnett and MD Elson call it Thin Lizzy. You can't have Thin Lizzy without Phil Linnett. You just can't. You wrote all the songs. Can't you just... Jesus, I'm, I'm going to go on a rant. I'm, I'm, I'm going to go before I go on a rant. But anyway, that, that was just come on and talk about Thin Lizzy for a while. So Shattered a few of the maths. Ken, brilliant, brilliant live born. But the 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 back catalogue is really, really patchy. Ken, if you, if you only want to pick one up, make sure it's live and dangerous. Because it is probably the greatest live album of all time. And it's it's hard to say that it's no. Again. So anyway, I'm away, I've got a cup of tea here getting cold. Uh, just come on have a blather, take my mind off the the situation. Right, so I'm gonna bugger off. Uh, have a nice weekend and I'll see you later. Tatty bye.